People say these cameras are outdated, out of style, out of touch. It's official, old buddy. Well, it has been. This old Sony, along with its kit lens and two new lenses I'm telling you about, are just as useful as any other street photography camera you can buy today. We often look at the larger camera with a larger sensor and assume that is the better option for me as a photographer or videographer. And while in many scenarios, full frame cameras or larger body cameras typically are gonna have better performance in a variety of environments, they're not always the ideal camera for every person. New full frame cameras are announced a few times a year from each manufacturer. And the majority of the time, none of these new models that are being released are actually targeted at beginner photographers. There is such a thing as entry level full frame, but actually before you get to entry level full frame, there's still a whole world of cameras we should consider for actual everyday use in street photography. Very few of us actually require all of the features that are provided by the newest releases of full frame cameras. One common misconception about smaller sensor cameras is that their image quality is lower than a full frame camera. And while there is some truth in this between specific models, for the most part, the image quality difference you're going to see is going to come down to how you expose an image and also potentially the lenses you put in front of that sensor. For the most part, if you got a cutting edge APS-C and a cutting edge full frame sensor today, put them side by side, it's going to be how you actually shoot and edit the image and the lenses you use that make most of the difference compared to the actual sensor itself. These older crop sensor cameras from Sony, the NEX line, can still produce fantastic images, even when their sensors are only 14 megapixels. Because a lot of the time, it's actually down to the lenses you're using on these cameras compared to just the internals of the camera itself. When it comes to where you should save your money in your setup, whether you should save your money on the camera itself or on the lenses, you'll always see a bigger benefit at first when saving money on your camera and investing in better lenses. Another hole we all seem to fall into today is the need for the new and shiny thing. I don't need it. I definitely don't need it. I'm definitely far from a saint in this department. I just recently bought the latest Sony crop sensor camera, which I love, but at the same time, it was very much an opportunity rather than a necessity. Most of us don't require the newest version of a thing, whether it's the newest version of a lens, like the generation two of a lens, or if it's the latest iteration of Sony's A7R line, for example. Say if you wanted the Sony A7R5, for example, that is going to cost you quite a pretty penny. But you could save a decent chunk of that if you went down to just the A7R Mark IV, or the Mark III, or at a push, the Mark II. The Mark III of the A7R IV, in this specific example, is the majority of what the Mark IV and Mark V are, bar 20 megapixels and a couple of fancy features. But for the most part, it's still a cutting edge, high res mirrorless camera. The amount of money you pay and what you get out of the camera is not always a linear gradient. A lot of the time that is going to be very much, if you can afford it, yes, you'll get a 5% improvement on something, but maybe you pay double or triple the price. As I've talked about the NEX5 in a couple of videos in the past, I've particularly touched on its photography capabilities, but I was surprised to see in some of the comments that we actually had a few people watching who have actively used the NEX5 and variations of the NEX line for making videos and short films. I've used a few different of these Sony crop sensor cameras for making videos and films, but the NEX line is not one I've ever actually tried shooting with that much. So it's really great to see that even today in 2023, people are using the NEX for its full range of features, not just for photography. The problems that the NEX5 has that I've talked about in previous videos, things like not having an abundance of manual dials or a lot of custom buttons and a bit of a clunky interface, these are things that you get used to after an hour of shooting with a camera, and they do not actually have any meaningful impact on the quality of the images. The quality of the images come down to how you expose, the lens you use, and how you edit those RAW files. I did a video where I directly compared the NEX5 and the a 700 and both of these cameras I've been using regularly recently. And genuinely, the images from the NEX5 are so similar to the a 700 once you actually edit them and export them as JPEGs that if you were just buying one for photography and budget was a real concern, you could avoid spending that much money on the brand new A7700 and get something much older and much cheaper and invest the rest of the money into good lenses. When talking about the NEX5 recently, I have mentioned a mystery third lens I've not yet been able to show. That's because this lens until now has been unreleased. 
So while I've been testing it, I haven't been able to talk about it or share images from it. But that ends right now. This is the brand new TT Artisan 35mm f1.8. This is the Sony E-mount version. This gives us an equivalent 50mm focal length on full frame with a nice and bright f1.8 aperture, which is fantastic. Meaning it's a very nice alternative to Sony's Nifty 50, both for full frame and crop sensor. The most apparent thing about this lens when I picked this up compared to other third party autofocus lenses I've used, and even compared to the other TT Artisan lens that I've used, is the build quality. Actually, this is a majority metal construction and is very nicely weighted for what is essentially a nifty 50. The only plastic parts I believe are part of the filter thread and also the focus ring. But apart from that, it is mostly a metal construction and feels very, very nice on the front of the camera. It comes paired with a metal lens hood for its 55mm focal length. However, that lens hood is a little bit fiddly as you can't put on the lens cap while the lens hood's on. So it's not really like a store it with the lens hood on, it's more of a use it when you need it kind of deal. Compared to the kit lens of the NEX5 and the previous TT Artisan 27mm 2.8 that I've talked about in a previous video, the 35mm feels like the most premium option of all three of these lenses. To me, it has the better build quality and also the overall better experience of having the fastest aperture and also having very responsive autofocus. The autofocus, of course, is not as integrated as a native Sony E-mount lens. However, compared to the 27mm TT Artisan lens, I found it hunts a lot less and actually will track subjects all the way up to the edge of the frame when I used it on my a 700 as well, where I can actually test full edge of frame to edge of frame autofocus area. TT Artisan sent me this lens and actually when they sent it to me they also shared some concerns that some of the copies that they'd sent out to people for review had had an excessive amount of glaring when pointing towards light sources and I can confirm that my specific copy has not had many of these problems. So I'll show a few images of that that I'm hopefully going to test before this video goes live. The NEX system is great for street photography, but I know a lot of people out there are not fans of the Sony lineup or the E-mount system. So if you're interested in Micro Four Thirds, check out this video here on a great system that has a lot of versatility and produces fantastic images.